Now we're going to lay out the elements on our fixed width web page. For our web pages that have asides, we want the article to be 600 pixels wide and be on the left. We want the aside to be 340 pixels wide and on the right. And we want a 20 pixel gap in between. 600 plus 340 plus 20 equals 960. On pages that do not have an aside, then the article should default to its full width of 960 pixels. It's most important to make sure that the narrowest element, that all the content within it fits inside the designated width. If an, if an element, if content inside the aside is too wide, then that'll break the container and cause all kinds of layout problems. So make your life easy fix the narrowest element first. So we want to make sure a side and everything in it is 340 pixels wide. So let's go to Chrome. And this is our starting point. I did make a checkpoint, a copy, pre-float, index pre-float and webd.css, webd-pre-float .css so that I can go back to this just for reference. But my working page is here and control shift I will toggle the Chrome developer tools. So looking at this, toggle them off, I see that the article is the full width, the Aside is the full width and let's go to brackets. First thing we're going to do is for the aside we're going to set its width. So we'll set its width to 340 pixels and its margin left to zero because we're going to be setting the margin right on the article. So we don't want any additive properties here. So let's see what happens. I just changed that. I'm going back into Chrome and I'm going to refresh my working copy and there is a change. If you look, you can see that the background color of the bucket of my aside has shrunk and if I use the Chrome developer tools and do and select the aside you can see that it is 340 pixels wide and its left margin is zero. Good. But now, let's scroll down and make sure everything fits in it. So I'm going to toggle that. Oh, oh, look, here's a problem. Here is a link that's a little too wide. How wide is it? Well, if I go into the Chrome Developer Tools and scroll up so that it's visible and I select that, and as I hover over it, it says, hey, that A element, it's 463.75 pixels wide. It's like, oh, that's, that's more than 340. That's a problem. And same here. The Goodyear Blimp Facebook page link is 348.42 pixels wide. And that's wider than 340. So that will cause that container to break. We need to fix that first. The image looks good. If I look at that, that's 240 pixels. 240 is less than 340, so we're good there. So we need to fix the width of this 
element here, and that A element is contained within a P element. So I'm going to create a rule for that P element. Going into brackets, I'm going to make a new rule for a P2, uh, I'm sorry, a P that is a child of a side. And in the case where the contents overflow, what do I want to happen? Well, I don't want to see it. I want it to be hidden. And I want to do something special if it's text to let me know that, hey, there's additional text here because it is a link. So if it's a text overflow, then what I want to do is I want to have a little dot, 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 an ellipses there. So I make that change, I save it, and I go over into Chrome, and I refresh, and let me control shift I, and now you can see that the offending link here and here has a dot dot dot, so it indicates that, hey, this, this is too long for here, but it into, so we're truncating it, putting a little dot, dot, dot to let you know that it's truncated. If you hover over it, you will get the full link. So that's good. So everything is contained within 340 pixels. So that's all that we want to do with this one. Uh, let's make sure that WebD page also ha doesn't have any issues and nope. That's aside, has no problems with overflowing text. And project doesn't have an aside, so it's going to go the full width. So we're good here. And now on to the actual floating in the next video.